Alright, moving into the submachine guns. Specialized for rapid firing. Tch, anyone who's seen a machine gun could have told you that. So the first one is the Heckler & Koch MP5. This weapon has been featured in several Resident Evil games, to be honest. Let's test it out. Alright, so the MP5 in this game fires a little slower than it did in Resident Evil 5. But that doesn't mean the firepower isn't the same. Let's test the MP5 on a standard ooze. Alright, I fired off 10 shots, but only 9 of them hit. So 9 shots from the MP5 to take down a standard ooze. So, a pretty good firepower for a submachine gun. The MP5 is the more powerful of the two submachine guns in this game. Has decent firing speed, decent capacity. It's basically your all-around machine gun. Alright, that is it for the Heckler & Koch MP5. Now for the next submachine gun, the P90. This is its first time in a Resident Evil game, so cool. So, obviously it has a much faster firing speed than the MP5, has a slightly higher capacity, the trade-off is it has less firepower. But it also has one upgrade space, so you can compensate for that. Alright, let's test this awesome P90 out. Being a P90, it definitely fires faster than the MP5, and the reloading speed is also a little faster because it's a different kind of clip. Alright, now let's test the P90 on a standard ooze. Alright, I'm gonna have to look that back. I fired off 12 shots, I think, but I'm not sure if all of them hit. Alright, after playing the clip back in slow motion, I have concluded that it took 11 shots. All the shots hit except the last shot, which I accidentally fired because I didn't know his death animation had begun. So, 11 shots from the P90 to take down a standard ooze. So, this is weaker than the MP5, I would imagine so. This is the faster, more capacity machine gun, so it would naturally have less firepower. But I actually prefer it over the MP5, simply because of its high capacity and firing speed. When using it in raid mode at a high level, it is awesome sometimes. It has a very, very tiny recoil, so it's very accurate. Alright, that is it for the P90. I always want to see RC P90 because I'm used to GoldenEye 007. Alright, now for the Assault Rifles. It has piercing ability plus a wide hit zone. And the first one is the Stayer Aug, or Aug, or A-U-G. I'm not sure how you're really supposed to pronounce it, but I like to go by Aug. And this is its debut to the Resident Evil series as well. Being an assault rifle, it has more firepower than both the MP5 and the P90. The firing speed is the same as the MP5, but the capacity is slightly lower. Alright, let's test it out. So the AUG fires at the same rate as the MP5. Slightly faster reload animation, since it's just a clip, doesn't have to do anything else really. But from looking at the firepower beforehand, this should take less shots than the MP5 when tested on a news. Alright, so 8 shots from the Stayer AUG to take down a standard ooze. Now, it makes sense that it takes one shot less than the MP5. Eight shots, pretty good. This is pretty much the middle machine gun out of all the machine guns. There's five total, and this is the third one. So this is right in the middle when it comes to damage, capacity, reload speed, etc. So this is a good all-around assault rifle. 
Alright, that is it for the stayer aug. Alright, now for the next assault rifle. The Heckler and Koch G36. Now, this is the BSAA's weapon for Revelations. In Resident Evil 5, it was the SIG 556. And in Resident Evil 6, it was the assault rifle for special tactics. The G36 is the most powerful regular assault rifle in the game. But, of course, it has the slowest firing speed and the least capacity. Let's test it out. The G36 is the slowest firing assault rifle out of all the machine guns, but pretty sure it's going to be the most powerful in campaign. Let's test that on a news. Alright, so only six shots from the G36 to take down a standard ooze. Now I think there was a headshot in there, but it's okay. It's still the most powerful assault rifle in campaign, and it does have the slowest firing speed and the least capacity. It has decent reload speed, so this weapon could be worth it in campaign. When it comes to assault rifles, I actually do like the G36 more than the AUG, and for the machine guns, I like the P90 because of its ridiculous firing speed. Alright, so that is it for the Heckler & Koch G36, and that is it for the regular machine guns. Alright, now for the last assault rifle, the High Roller. It's titled High Roller 2 because this is a special weapon that I earned in raid mode. And once again, ignore the statistics because it's a legendary weapon. This is basically an AK-74 and it's golden. It's slightly different than the 3DS version I think though. Anyway, let's test the High Roller out and then move on. Unfortunately, this was the only high roller I had to do a real test with. That firing speed is not realistic. Usually it would fire much slower than that. The reload speed was still very slow, however, so that was pretty typical. You know what? I'll know what I'll do. I'll do a separate clip with a different high roller, one that's not special, because that's the only one I have in my main profile. So I'll go to the other profile and get a high roller that will give you the accurate firing speed. So that is a lot more accurate when you have a high roller, normal, like nothing special about it. Very, very slow, and the reloading speed, painful. But it is the most powerful machine gun in raid mode. It's not really worth it though with that slow ass firing speed. The firing speed I had in the first test, that's the kind of speed you want, but the recoil is terrible. Alright, that is it for the high roller as well as all machine guns. Alright, now for the shotguns. Fires multiple bullets at once. Really? Alright, well I guess that's the best I can do. The first one is the Wyndham, the basic shotgun of Resident Evil Revelations. It always has wooden parts on it. Let's test it out. So it has all of the basic mechanics of a shotgun since Resident Evil 4. Same firing speed, same reload speed. Alright, let's test the firepower. Alright, so before this clip, I tested the shotguns on Ooze, and they all took the same amount of shots. So the Ooze wasn't a good enemy to test shotguns on, so I'm gonna test the shotguns on Hunters. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alright, so three shots from the Wyndham to take down a hunter at close range. So yeah, hunters are fierce predators, and they are pretty resistant to most weapons. They always have been since the beginning of Resident Evil. They debuted in the very first Resident Evil, and they were an enemy to be feared. Alright, that is it for the Wyndham shotgun. Alright, now for the next shotgun, the M3. Once again, this weapon has been in the Resident Evil series since Remake, so it's not a Resident Evil game apparently without the M3 or the M4. It's really the Benelli M3 Super 90. So this is basically the assault shotgun, I guess you could say, but it has a little less firepower, has quite faster firing speed, and a little more capacity. Also has an extra upgrade slot. And this is my personal favorite shotgun for Resident Evil Revelations. Alright, let's test it out. Alright, so unlike its predecessor games, the M3 in Revelations fires a little more faster than the standard shotgun. Usually it was always the same firing speed. The only difference would always be the firepower. Alright, so cool. Now let's test the M3. Uh, Alright, so the M3 also took three shots to take down a hunter. Alright, so basically, no matter what I do, the shotguns are going to take the same amount of shots for the enemy. Their firepower differences aren't enough to make a difference. Because the Wyndham has a firepower of 160, the M3 has a firepower of 130, and apparently that's not enough at close range like that. So, you are not gonna get a good damage comparison from the testing like this. You can only do it through the statistics of the firepower. So, sorry, that's just not enough damage difference, I guess. So, just simple showcasing here. Alright, that is it for the M3 shotgun. Now for the next shotgun, the return of the Hydra from Resident Evil 5. Now if you've seen my Resident Evil 6 weapon review, which the Hydra is also featured in, I stated that the Hydra seemed to decline since Resident Evil 5. Revelations was actually before Resident Evil 6, so that's why I'm not mentioning Resident Evil 6 that much. So this is the middle game when it comes to the Hydra. This is where it starts degrading, in my opinion. So it's not nearly as powerful as it was in Resident Evil 5. But that's for you guys to decide. So let's test it out. Alright, so I'm pretty sure that's the exact same animation from Resident Evil 5 when fired and reloaded. All the weapons in this game, in their categories, have like, the same exact sound glyph of when they're fired. But then again, this was initially released on the 3DS, and obviously the 3DS can't pack as much data as a console can, because they didn't have time to add to it when they ported it to console. But anyway, the Hydra fires and reloads exactly the same, but I highly doubt it's going to have the same firepower mechanics as it did in Resident Evil 5, because it was like the most powerful shotgun in 5, I remember. Let's test the Hydra! Okay, so the Hydra took four shots to take down a hunter, even with Parker behind me shooting his own shotgun. So wow, and all of those did seem close range. There probably was a shot in there that didn't get the full effect. The Hydra has the same firepower as the M3, which is only 130, but it's less powerful than the Wyndham. This is why I say the Hydra declines after Resident Evil 5. It's not nearly as powerful. The triple barrel thing doesn't work in this game, it seems. Alright, well, that being said, the Hydra seems to be the weakest shotgun in campaign, and I'm kinda happy because now it makes this a legitimate test. <laughs> It's not the same as the previous two shotguns. Alright, that is it for the Hydra, as well as all regular shotguns. Alright, now for the last legendary shotgun. The Drake. 
Now, this is similar to the Hydra, but instead of a triple barrel shotgun, it's just a double barrel shotgun. It's aimed just like the Hydra. And by the way, the Hydra onward changed the description of the shotgun, so let me read that for you. Fires more bullets than a normal shotgun. The Drake is the legendary shotgun. Let's test it out. Alright, this being raid mode, it's safe to say there is no fixed statistic of any weapon when used in this mode. So, yeah, that Drake fired, like, pretty fast for a shotgun, so I don't know if that's right. But this isn't a special level 50 Drake, so I really can't say. You get a different Drake, it will probably be completely different in all statistics, that's what I'm saying. These raid mode weapons are really just for show. Can't really tell you what the real firing speed was if it were in campaign. Because it isn't. That's the best depiction of the Drake I can give you. So that is it for the Drake shotgun as well as all shotguns.